From these Rick and Morty minifigures to this Lego Smurf cat, these are the best custom Lego items of all time. To start things off, I just have to look at this Lego Smurf cat. I cannot believe this guy has gotten so big that people are making him out of Legos. That is just so crazy. Now that I think about it, I don't even really know where he came from, but I guess he's here now. Does anyone actually even know how Smurf cat started? Drop a comment if you have any idea. I could really use the help. Anyways, getting back to the items, Brick Folk has been making trending characters out of Legos for a while now, with his most popular being the Lego alphabet lore and his mega compilation of Skibbity toilets. But since Smurf Cat stepped into the limelight, I guess he figured it was time to make one. He made three different versions, all more detailed than the last. The first one pretty much just looks like pixel art, which makes it pretty hard to tell that it actually is Smurf Cat. The second version is a lot more detailed than the first, but still looks a little funny. This time, the whiskers were added, but it honestly just makes him look like an old man. But with the third version, everything was perfect. Now, remember, he's still made out of Legos, so he's not going to look hyper realistic or anything, but it looks pretty cool. And here he is in all his glory. Brick Folk nailed his look with this version from his mushroom hat to his little walk all the way down to the leaf on his backpack. Everything was accounted for. I think it's safe to say if any more funny characters sprout up across the Internet, Brick Folk will be making a Lego version. Up next, I'd like you to take a look at this YouTube channel under the name Ronald Twos. At first glance, Twos's channel looks like any other average Lego fanatics YouTube channel. But when you really look at what he's been posting over the years, you'll start to see he's no ordinary Lego fan. The first video Twos posted on YouTube is titled Massive Huge Technic Lego D11 Bulldozer. This was a set released by Lego sometime in the early 2000s before it was remade in 2021. Twos continued to post videos of the D11 Bulldozer, among many other things, until 2015. And this was when we saw his first custom build. The video was titled Huge Lego P&H Rope Shovel built by Ronald Twos and shows a fully motorized and functional industrial rope shovel machine. Twos then uploads another video on the same day showing off the rope shovel's digging capabilities. I mean, this is just insane. This thing is made entirely out of Legos and it also functions with a remote control and works just how any other toy would. As time goes on, Twos keeps making his own Lego creations with each one being better and more functional than the last. He did take a bit of a hiatus from YouTube, but when he came back, he made one of the coolest things I think I have ever seen. Take a look at this Terminator arm made completely from scratch. When I tell you this is insane, I really mean it. Every single joint, from the wrist down to the knuckles on the pinky, are all functional. The video starts off with Twos just spinning the arm around. But if you think that's cool, wait until you see what he does next. Not only does he show every finger bending at every knuckle, but he even makes a fist out of the bionic arm. Mike Tyson better watch out. He goes on to show wrist movement and how different movements look at different angles. Twos made sure to dot his I's and cross his T's with this build, and it isn't even the coolest thing he's made. Up until this point, everything he's made has been powered by a motor. But what if instead of making something powered by motors, he made an actual motor out of Legos? Well, that's exactly what he did. The first motor he posted was this seven-cylinder radial engine made with Lego Technic parts. The engine has so many moving parts that it's hard to believe the entire thing really is made out of Legos. Just like in all of his other videos, Twos Twos makes sure to get every angle of this engine while it's moving, which makes for a very fun viewing experience. While Twos has made a lot of different engines in his career, this is the last one I'll be covering. For some reason, this video never made it onto Twos's personal YouTube channel, but it was posted by Beyond the Brick around three months ago. This is the Lamborghini Aventador engine, made entirely out of Legos. It's a V12 engine with 12 cylinders, which means it takes a ton of parts to make this idea a reality. Unfortunately, there's no information on just how many many pieces it actually took to make, so your guess is as good as mine. But just look at how cool this thing is. It's moving a whole lot faster than the radial engine and has so much more going on. I swear it looks like it could actually power a car. Twos has made a bunch of different engines, but in my opinion, this is by far the coolest. I mean, come on, it's a Lamborghini engine. Okay, I think it's time I move away from engines for a little bit. As cool as they are, there are loads of other custom Lego items that are just as awesome as engines. Let's take a look at some custom minifigures made by MGF Customs. Now, on one hand, LEGO has been known to make some minifigures that look 
well, let's just call it a little off. But on the other hand, there are some minifigures that fans have wanted forever that LEGO just doesn't seem to care to make. So as a result, some people take it upon themselves to bring their favorite character into the world of LEGO. And that's exactly what MGF Customs does. To start it off, you guys need to see this Killer Croc minifigure from the DC series. Okay, I can kind of see why LEGO didn't want to make this guy into a minifigure, seeing as there is a lot going on here. But that did not stop MGF. Look at how well done the scales are on this minifigure. Isn't that crazy? Oh, by the way, did I mention he hand paints all of his custom minifigures? Yeah, talk about talent. These scales took MGF an entire day to paint, which is honestly less time than I would have thought. Man, this guy is committed. The detail on the scales is the obvious part, but there's a detail on this that I think is really cool that kind of gets glossed over. Look at the jacket that Croc is wearing. Not only is there another hand painted logo on the back of the jacket, but if you look really closely, you can see that this guy is actually wearing a corduroy jacket. Pretty snazzy for a villain. Overall, this minifigure is off the charts. But if MGF can make Croc look that good, what else can he do? Up next is this yellow jacket minifigure from the first Ant-Man movie. This is by far one of the coolest paint jobs I've seen on a minifigure in general. MGF treated this guy like a new car, and boy did it pay off. Here's what the original looks like from the movie, and here's the Lego version made by MGF. It genuinely blows my mind that this wasn't made by Lego themselves. Look at how good this is. This is one of the most well-made helmets I've seen on a minifigure. Adding that together with the paint job on the body and everything else, including the stingers coming off of his back, this guy is just incredible. But there is one other minifigure that I think looks a little bit better. I might be biased, but there's no way I could leave it out. This is the Iron Spider suit from Avengers Infinity War. If you want to talk about paint jobs, this guy takes the cake. Not only are there four colors that had to be used, but the web pattern had to be as symmetrical as possible, which is extremely difficult. While that's all well and good, the story behind the pincers on the back is mind-boggling. These pincers are actually from another franchise called Mini Maid, which luckily enough for MGF were compatible with Legos. To get this to work, he had to modify the neck brace the pincers were originally on, then take eight whole hours to paint the pincers. After all of that, he was able to attach them onto the minifigure and end up with this result. See, I told you it was better. The last minifigure I'm going to show from NGF is this insane Thanos minifigure, or as he likes to call it, Big Fig. I had to include this just so I could show you guys the difference between Lego's Thanos minifigure and MGF's Thanos minifigure. It's literally like night and day. Lego's version of Thanos looks all right at best. There isn't that much detail involved for any part of it besides the faceplate. The armor looks a little weird since it's fused into his skin, and the Infinity Gauntlet kind of looks like a McDonald's toy. But MGF's Thanos hit every nail on the head. Of course, he had to show up with the incredible attention to detail as usual. While the faceplate may not have as much emotion, literally everything else is better, so it doesn't even matter. The armor looks like actual armor, and the clothes he's wearing look phenomenal. And then there's the Infinity Gauntlet. This this thing on its own looks like a collector's item. I cannot say enough about the details with these minifigures. The gauntlet's paint job is magnificent, and the stones complement it so well. This guy even made the stones look good. There is no doubt in my mind that MGF is one of the best minifigure designers of all time. LEGO better step up their game. Okay, this next custom LEGO item is one for the books. It's a version of the Millennium Falcon from Star Wars, but I can promise you that you've never seen one like this before. This is the Millennium Falcon built by Zeke W at Bricks and Minifigs, a store located in Plano, Texas. This ship is the real deal. It has so many pieces that Zeke doesn't even remember the exact amount it took to build this thing. The best guess he had was 20,000, which is literally more than double the amount of pieces in the Ultimate Collector Series version. The ship is 24 inches wide, that's two feet, and 34 and a half inches long. That is almost three feet, making it one of the biggest LEGO Millennium Falcons on record. Zeke goes into detail about what he felt needed to be improved with the already existing Millennium Falcon, and shows how he was able to pull that off with his build. For starters, he said how he wanted to really capture the flying saucer look that the Falcon has. To do that, he sectioned it off three times to get three different angles before reaching the top of the ship, which is completely flat. Obviously, a lot of work went into making the outside of the ship look as detailed and accurate as possible. But what about the inside? Typically, the interior of LEGO Star Wars ships don't have that much going on, unless, of course, 
course, we're talking about the Ultimate Collector series. Those ships get crazy. But what's interesting with Zeke's ship is that a lot of the 20,000 pieces were actually used on the inside of the ship. In the video provided by Beyond the Brick, Zeke takes off the top parts of the ship to show what he built on the interior. And what he did was unbelievable. He got everything right, even parts of the ship that we've never seen before. But I'll save that for later. He built everything, from the little seating area where Chewie got a little angry, to the vents that hold questionable cargo. He even built the path that leads to the cockpit perfectly, giving us an idea of what it would actually be like to be inside the ship. Then there's the spot for the gunman. Zeke built this in a way where when you look through it, you can see all the way through the ship, just how it was in the movie. And for the part we've never seen before, Zeke took it upon himself to create a cargo bay that I wouldn't even think twice about. It fits in perfectly, and for it never having been shown before, he did a really good job. I could go on about this ship forever, but I don't want to bore you guys. Up next is a build from the goat of Legos himself. TD Bricks. The build I'll be talking about is this incredible Lego theme park. At first, TD didn't really know how to go about making a theme park out of Legos, so he took a trip to Legoland to see how the experts did it. Talk about commitment. After studying Legoland, he got to work and made the best Lego theme park on YouTube. He starts off by making this super cool entrance with a Lego Earth and a rocket flying off of it. I already want to go there, and there aren't even any rides yet. After he equips the entrance with a few ticket stands, he starts building the first ride. He makes a huge stable roller coaster which every theme park has and even makes it so that it works on its own that is insane to do with legos after making the ride a little more welcoming he moves on and makes a ferris wheel then he makes a swing which you'll usually see at just about every theme park or carnival his was spinning a little fast though i really hope you don't get any lawsuits td after making three rides he finally starts getting some customers the rides fill up and td is on his way to making it big in the theme park business after the big wave of customers he makes another in famous ride. This time it was the dropper, and unfortunately he ran out of motors, so it didn't work on its own. After that, he makes a few concession stands, because everybody knows food and roller coasters go together like peanut butter and jelly. Then he makes some bumper cars so all the kids can learn to drive and become functioning members of society. After this, he adds some bathrooms and a cleanup crew for all the satisfied customers. Next, he makes some crazy tall water slides with real water at the end of the ride. And to finish things off, he added the famous theme park ladder game and a basketball with some big prizes at stake. Who doesn't love raid games? Anyways, last but certainly not least on our list, we have the Rick and Morty minifigures. Rick and Morty is a show that's been going on for almost 10 years now. It can be a little inappropriate at times, so it's no wonder LEGO hasn't made something involving them yet. That didn't stop fans though. There's definitely some crossover between LEGO fans and Rick and Morty fans, so eventually someone had to make it happen. And who other than TD Bricks? In 2018, almost six years ago, TD showed off these Rick and Morty minifigures along with a few others. They're from a web website called minifigs.me, and if they were doing this six years ago, I can only imagine what they're doing now. So let's take a peek. Some of their most famous minifigures include Deadpool, John Wick, Michael Myers, Robocop, and so many others. They even have an entire section made for public figures. When it comes to custom minifigures, I think minifigs.me has the most versatility, but they're still not coming close to my guy MGF. What was your favorite custom Lego item? Let me know down in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe.